Hey everyone, we're going to try something different this week. We're going to make a mobility short. This will be about 15 minutes. We're going to make a concerted effort on the hips because it's kind of the core of everything that we do as endurance athletes. We need to make the hips super strong. They need to be flexible, mobile, not tight in order to get strong. So here we go. So we have five exercises. We're gonna go through three different variations of each one. So we'll go through all five and then you'll see them all again and then you'll see them all one last time. So we're gonna try and make each one just one minute so that you can use this as just like a 15 minute quick hip mobility, hip strengthening kind of drill. So we have towels because we're gonna be doing some kneeling stuff. If you're on a carpet, that's fine. We, I have gliders. If you have those, they're awesome. If not, socks on a hardwood floor are also awesome. If you get gliders, they have a like cushiony side that can go on the hardwood, or if you're on a carpet, you can flip them over and put the plastic down and it's equally as slippery, okay? So start with uh, both knees down on the ground. So the first thing we're gonna do is gonna be um, just stretching up the hip. So just like, think about like, uh, you're just trying to get all the cobwebs out of those uh, areas. So start down on the knees, just take one big step forward, lean back, drive the hips forward. If you feel comfortable there, you can go chin up to the ceiling, eyes up to the ceiling, five on each side. So the idea is each of these are like just enough that it's getting a lot of movement into the hip, but not enough that you're just getting so tired and bored and fatigued. Because we got a lot of these, three rounds. So five on each side. Think about pulling the shoulders back, driving the hips forward. And as soon as you get to that furthest point, in the stretch, you can come back up and out of it. So notice our toes are forward and the foot's just landing forward. After that, you're gonna go down into a plank. I'm gonna grab the gliders, Jason has socks, so that's all cool. One foot on each. In a plank, you're just gonna alternate, pull one in and switch other one in. And imagine you're trying to get them to pass in that middle spot. So you're not doing one and then the other, they're just constantly moving. 10 on each side. So you should feel this in the quads. This is a good strengthening workout for the hip flexors. 10 each way, and then stand up slowly. So balancing on one leg, just take one leg forward, lift, slow on the way back down. Super simple, 10. And imagine you're keeping everything else perfectly still. I'm not leaning back to get the leg higher. Once you're done with those 10, hold the leg up as high as you comfortably can. And imagine you're pulling the knee up and then straightening out the leg. Different than just bending the knee. Instead of going knee tuck, extend. Knee tuck, extend. So you can go through 10 of those. That's a big demand on the front of that hip. And you might think like, wow, there's so many other parts of my hip. Why are we not doing the other parts? Those are for the next rounds. Right now we're just focusing on the front of that hip. Other side, same thing. 10 raises. Just try to show off your flexibility. The lack thereof. Ten of these. It should feel like you're not like swinging it up. It's just that like controlled lift, controlled descent. And then for this one, the heel almost stays at the same height the whole time. 10 of these. You should start to feel that in the front of the hip. When we're done with those, go back down to the ground into a plank. And now we're just doing both knees tucking in together at the same time. So hands down, both knees come in, both knees go out and see if you can eliminate any pause on either end. It's just like you're like a metronome. As soon as you hit the top, you go right back to the other side. All right, and then for the last thing of these five, just need one glider if you have them. Now we're just going straight back for that foot. Shoulders stay stacked over the hips. Come all the way back up and out of it. Straight back. So you should feel that in the, if it is your right leg going back, you should feel that in the left quad. All 
All right, and then same 10 on the other side. If you want to make like a workout out of this, you could always do like push-ups between each, switch sides, sit-ups between each, and stretch this out. What we're trying to do is just give you this like condensed 15-minute workout that you could do anytime. At some point, you could start to memorize these moves. They're your go-to before you have like a high demand race, a long race where you're gonna be asking a lot of the hips. All right, so when we're done there, we're gonna go back through second round. So back down onto the knees. This time, first time foot was out in front, toes forward. Now we're gonna go foot wide, but toes are still forward. Third round, we're gonna go toes up. So shift the weight forward, come back, and switch. So if your knees were the center of a clock, you're going to like one o'clock and then 11 o'clock. So you're just adding a little shift. That third one is gonna be the deepest, the most intense, because we're gonna add this wider step with the rotation. So this is like a progressive move, each progressive exercise, series of exercises, each move gets a little harder. So now we're going to go down to the plank, back to your gliders, one foot on each. Last time we did alternating feet coming in, now we're going to do alternating one foot going out. So one foot on each glider, imagine it's just like this, it's like shuffleboard. One foot hits the other one, ten on each side. Just for fun, at the end of this one, let's do five where the legs are moving together. So once you're done with ten on each side, you'll end up going five, four, three, two, one, and then stand back up. Back to those straight leg hip raises. So pick a foot to balance on, pick a foot to lift. Toes are going forward. Just raise the leg up and back down. So now you should feel like, oh yeah, I remember when I was complaining about the front of my hip hurting, now it's the side. Just kind of like working our way around. 10 of these, toes are pointed forward, that's important because we're trying to just move on that frontal plane, that plane that would cut your front half from your back half. And then hold it up as high as it feels comfortable, tuck the knee in and extend the leg back out. So again, it's different than just drawing my heel to my glute. I'm driving the knee forward, extending the leg back out. All right, same thing on the other side. <laughs> side lift. And you should feel that isolated in the outside of the hip. If you could just dig your fingers into that. At the bottom, it goes loose and then it engages and lifts right at that very, very top range of motion. You should feel it at its very tightest. 10 of those knee tucks. All right. And then back down to a plank. So this time we're gonna do knees tuck in, go out wide and back around. So if you were doing like a breaststroke, it's the same kind of move. So knee tuck first. Arms out, think, tuck the knees in, out and around. Ten of these. Fancy. All right. Then stand back up. You only need one glider if you're using those. So now we're going out to the side. So we're not leaning away from the foot. Instead, I'm just doing this squat. Reach the leg out to the side. Put some weight into that leg and pull it in slowly. You'll feel the difference. If I leave all the weight in this leg, I can just pull it in and I wasted this opportunity to hit the hip adductor. So. Take the foot out wide, put some weight into it, almost like you're trying to like push, 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 push down on it and pull it in. 10 of those, you can slide it out smooth, push down on the ground, pull, 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 pull.
You, again, you should be able to feel that inner thigh engage. If you're able to like, try to dig the thumb into that, it's loose here, and then boom, gets really tight as you start pulling it in. It's a hard muscle to hit. We don't often pull things like this. We move things like this or push them out. So it's a good opportunity to hit that muscle. So make sure, you can totally cheat on this one. It's not worth it. Go slow out, push weight into the ground, slowly pull it back in. If you have a band or something like a really long skinny band, you could tie it around the ankle and then anchor it to a pole. So you're pulling away from that pole. You can also use like a towel and put a dumbbell on it if you want to get creative. And now you're just dragging something with the weight in. 10 of those. Then we'll go through it one more time. All right, starting with the kneeling. Those five exercises last time. This should all look familiar. Down onto the knees, this time toes out and really far out to the side, so like to three o'clock. Shift the weight over. I like to add this overhead reach because it just like stretches out everything on the side. Back to neutral, switch sides. Toe goes out, bicep comes to the ear, lean reach. And that's about as big of an externally rotated stretch you can get. And we do it third just because it's a big ask out of the leg. It's a range of motion that doesn't get hit a lot. So you wanna make sure you're warmed up before you go into it. And then last one. Is that five on your side? You think I can count? Okay, back to the planks. This time, we're going opposite knees, so we're trying to do rotational, adding as much rotation to the joints as possible. So one foot on each glider, and now we're going right knee to the left, elbow, left knee to the right elbow. If you can take that leg out further, go for it. So try knee to the elbow, that's super simple. Try extending that leg out, as long as you bring that glider back in. All right, 10 on each side. When we're done there, stand up slowly, straight leg raise. Now it's going to the back. So we're trying to hit this posterior chain. You could get that leg up really high if you lean forward, not the goal. Keep the upper half of the body still. You could even do this up against a wall if you wanted to like totally make sure you don't lean too far forward. 10. This is a good one too if you like dig your thumb into that glute. It just fires, it gets really hard at the top and then it gets loose at the bottom. And then from there, hold it as high as you feel comfortable. Imagine you're just like doing this like donkey kick. You're trying to just like kick a flat foot behind you. You should feel like the hamstrings firing this whole time. 10. Same thing on the other side, straight leg raise. And then those 10 bent knees. Last 10 through these. Bend the knee, extend. We'll go through gliders one more time, lunges one more time, done. This should be 15 minutes. All right, so back to your gliders. So the second round we did these like, this frog kick, to, uh, knees tuck in first. Now you're gonna go legs out wide and then tuck the knees, then straighten the legs. So this one comes least naturally to everybody. So start up in a plank, feet go wide, tuck the knees in and they travel back narrow together. glider if you're using them. Put it under the foot that's going to be moving. Now we're going to do this big curtsy lunge. So we're asking this standing hip to have this big, big rotation in it. 
by sending the free leg back and making the pelvis twist on top of the femur. So the femur's not going anywhere, but the pelvis is gonna move on it. So pull that right leg around. Imagine you're trying to get that right hip down to the ground and then come back up to neutral. The right hip is not getting anywhere close to the ground, but that's generally where you're trying to send it. If you feel like you wanna make these harder, you can always take a weight and just hold it straight out in front of you. It's not only asking a bit out of the arms, but it's providing a counterbalance so that you can move deeper into the movement. So in some ways it makes it easier because it helps you get back up out of it, but in a lot of ways it makes it harder because you're just going much further down. Last thing, I should have shed one of these long sleeve layers before I started. It is like 50 degrees outside in July. All right, 10 of those. And we'll do one of these again. It's a great little thing to just have in your back pocket. There's really no excuse to not do 15 minutes of hip work at least once a week. So either do your 30 minute mobility or your 15 minutes focused on abs. You can always make it a harder workout and throw some fun, heavier stuff in between. But these are all really good moves to keep your hips healthy and to keep you moving evenly when fatigue sets in at the end of a race. You don't need much space. <laughs>